Hey everybody, it is Weather for Weather Geeks time here on the 6th day of August in 2020. Uh, we've got some quiet weather to talk about for the next few days, but no shortage of interesting things to uh, talk about here in our local weather. wanted to start out this evening uh, with a little bit of a look at the water temperatures compared to average over Lake Erie. Uh, in the news lately, we've had a fair amount of water spouts over Lake Erie. You've probably seen some pictures and video. Uh, most of these occurring on fair weather days, not necessarily big uh, thunderstorm days. This can happen at this time of the year, even though the water spouts are typically a little more frequent in the fall season. They can happen in midsummer when some conditions are met. You need really warm water. We have had really warm water. The uh, red line here is the 2020 temperature trace uh, on Lake Erie, and the blue line is the, the average temperature. Uh, so we've been above the average temperature-wise on the lake for much of late June, July, and early August, although we've seen those temperatures back off a little bit over the last few days. So we've seen uh, water temperatures around 80 degrees in some of the warm spots on Lake Erie. So we've had the warm water. Uh, we've had relatively high humidity of late. We've had a lot of muggy weather of late, and that can lead to lower cloud bases and easier to form water spouts. You also need a big temperature difference between uh, the water in the air upstairs at three or four or five thousand feet and so we've had those ingredients coming together and that's produced a pretty active water spout uh, period just slightly unusual for mid to late summer again uh, these become a little more common in the fall when that temperature difference between the the water and the air is usually quite a bit bigger but we've had uh, a pretty good recipe of late someone asked me about that on twitter last evening so i wanted to address uh, that issue on Weather Geeks this evening, since our weather is pretty quiet. Last week's drought monitor featured a big expansion of the the moderate drought coverage across northern Ohio, parts of western PA as well. That's last week's map. Now this week's map, as this rolls forward, will feature fewer areas in kind of that tan color, but a lot of real estate still covered in the abnormally dry category. We've had more frequent bouts of rain over the last several days. That's helped, but we could still use more rain, as uh, most of the areas still in a pretty decent deficit uh, when we look back at the last four, five, six weeks. When we look at things compared to uh, a few months ago, several months ago, and a year ago, a year ago, the country was in great shape drought-wise. Uh, but starting over the uh, winter season, the southwest really saw an expansion of dry and drought areas, and uh, it's only gotten worse in places such as Colorado and Utah and Arizona and Mexico, front range of the Rockies. Uh, a lot more areas in drought in the midsummer season this year as compared to last year. All right, a few times each afternoon, low orbiting satellite goes over the Lake Erie region, gives us some great pictures to look at on nice clear afternoons like this one. A few things of note here. Uh, when the picture was taken, relatively clear skies over northeast Ohio. Oh, if I can get out my telestrator, there it is. Uh, here's Cleveland, of course, right here. Mosquito Lake right here. Pima Tuning over here few fair weather clouds over Lake Erie, and then a nice lake breeze on the northern shore of Lake Erie, producing some lake breeze clouds up in parts of Ontario. Yeah, it was a beautiful day today, a great uh, summer afternoon. These are the kind of days we dream about back in the dead of winter. Summer days with lots of daylight, long days, low humidity, comfortable temperatures, just about perfect. Not much going on once again across the country this evening, aside from daily afternoon thunderstorms along the front range of the Rockies and in parts of the southeast as well. Now, the higher dew point air is locked up both in the southeast and in the Plain States. The moisture that's across the Plain States now comes our way by early next week, but not on Friday. Another day with low dew points on Friday. Not quite as cool tomorrow morning as it was this morning. We reached 53 at the airport this morning, our coolest temperature since mid-June. It'll be a handful of degrees warmer than that Friday morning, but still a very nice start to the day. And a good deal of sunshine throughout the day will make it into the lower 80s in the afternoon. I've removed that small chance of a shower that was in our Friday afternoon forecast previously. I think we're dry, and I think we're dry all weekend. While it will be pretty warm on Sunday, it's going to be a great pool day. Uh, not that humid just yet. The higher dew point air arrives Sunday night and heading into Monday. So we'll do 82 on Saturday, 86 degrees on Sunday. A fine summer weekend across our area. The tropics have been in the news a lot lately. Uh, when we look back at, uh, at hurricane history in the Atlantic Basin, we've had some big years. We've had some years in which there hasn't been much activity. Uh, this year is going to be a big year. We've already had a couple of hurricanes, and the uh, NOAA forecast, along with the Colorado State forecast, both of these entities do 
uh, tropical forecasts routinely at the start of the season, then they do a midsummer update. And the CSU and the NOAA forecast both featuring double digit hurricanes now. When you factor in the number of tropical storms, we could be up in the mid 20s as far as named systems in the Atlantic Basin this year. We might reach the end of the alphabet. We've already gotten through the I storm, and it's only the sixth day of August. Uh, so far, two hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. The 30 year average for hurricanes is seven. The record's 15, and this year, expecting about 12. And again, that's just hurricanes. That's not counting the number of tropical storms that'll be in the mix as well. And we're still a good month away from the climatological peak of hurricane season, which is around September 10th to September 12th. Uh, so we've got a long way to go. End of August, start of September could be super active across the Atlantic Basin when it comes to hurricane activity. All right, back here at home. Enjoy a nice evening. Enjoy a great Friday, a great weekend. I uh, have tomorrow off, so I'll see you back here on Weather for Weather Geeks on Monday. We'll see you then.